Welcome to Not Factory Approved, the site where I attempt to show you many different ongoing projects. Some are worth doing, some are not. Some are successes, and some are not. And some of the projects you may just wonder about my sanity. But it's enjoyable, so hopefully this you find this helpful. Hopefully it, uh, if nothing else, teaches you when to quit. And otherwise, sometimes you might just see a project that uh, comes from the ashes of despair and rises like a phoenix to be something useful once again. So hopefully you find this site helpful and enjoyable and stay tuned. Well, here's the top of the stairs. I have to do something with baseboards or trim on the stairwell to the floor has ended up leaving a drop there which is not going to frame up very well the baseboard there's several ways I can do this I could have these pieces matching like this and then fill the hole or I can lay another piece of flooring across here and then just have a piece come straight across and then the other piece butt up against it. Or I can make a piece that comes up just slightly above the baseboard, runs across, goes down, and then squares up with the other one. So I'm going to try that with a piece of cardboard first, see what it looks like. And uh, cardboard is much easier than working with the wood and throwing it away, even though this is cheap pressed paper it still costs money and uh, so I'll trim the pieces if I like it then I will be sure to flip it around for the other side let's see what it looks like Do you remember what we're doing here? I'm videoing it all so this piece here I've marked this is the butt end of the baseboard for the stairwell and this is the line where they meet so I'm not sure how that will look exactly but um, we'll see what I like to do for something like this is first cut off the 45 otherwise it becomes very hard to tell how long it is exactly put it where you want it and then mark the end there to match where you want to cut it and that way uh, far less chance of mistake this is what I did with the corners where it descends the stairs not everybody's cup of tea but I thought I'd do something a little different so made that uh, piece of uh, uh, what's called one by six it's actually one half inch by or three quarters try that again five eighths of an inch by uh, five and a half inches cut it down and made that piece uh, it's not that complicated cardboard template 90 degrees here 90 degrees from that surface and then draw a line roughly eighth of an inch sixteenth of an inch above the boards and put it on there the biggest problem was finding uh, studs to uh, make it secure uh, still needs a coat of paint on top of it but I think it looks all right. Then down the bottom, treatment's a little different. Just made that corner there, came straight out, and drew a line up using a piece of scrap. Make that. And then I'll put that piece in today, which is pretty simple. And then this side. And focus. No focus. There. Um, a little focusing episode there. So here we are again. So this piece, because it's a corner, the stairs sticking out, and we don't really want to cover the stairs. My wife's overlying philosophy is it's a house. Shop in a house. No need to get carried away. So it's comfortable. Looks all right happy with that and then these are just the commercial stringers we bought 
installed by the contractor. I'm not trimming them up in any way, I just painted them. And did the same treatment in this corner. The pieces um, making an edge. The main reason being that there's a small step between the vinyl plank and the stringer. And I didn't want to cut down a big piece. I didn't want to splice it. I didn't want to put a little piece in there in the bottom and fill it. So, right or wrong? I like to bevel the ends where they're going together against a change in direction, like an upright piece there. So it's easy to do with a sharp plane and slow motion. And just move across. But the plane's got to be sharp. Doesn't work. There it is. If you can't have a sharp mind, you might as well have a sharp plane. I had a stud finder for years that worked great. Cost, I think, 12 bucks about 25 years ago. Recently quit. So, about a year ago, I bought one of these. It supposedly detects power in the wall and the stud. And I've already replaced it under warranty once because it quit working. And this one is only a few weeks old and it's quit working. You can see it hasn't been dropped, hasn't been abused, just a piece of junk. There you go, Stanley. You made lots of good tools. This isn't one of them. Just to be clear, it's not totally useless. Usually it's about two inches away from the stud with a variance, but I actually managed to find a stud there first time and there first time. That's unusual. So it does work occasionally. Maybe it's like me. I almost had a self-inflicted disaster. This baseboard runs to the back wall and I was nailing it in at the, near the corner and then I remembered after I drove the nails in that the in-floor heat tubes were on the other side of that wall and it's not a, a completely thick wall either it's they're recessed into the wall so they run against a piece of plywood which is mounted on the jip rock or the jip rock is mounted on it but you get the picture. I always appreciate divine protection for my own incompetence. Fortunately, no holes.